So welcome to Scrapbook Live. It is Wednesday, February 14th. I am Megan Jacks. Thanks for joining me. So for today's layout, I have a project from the Creative Memories blog. This one is clear back in 2021. Um, or 2020. Oh, 2020 um, from the Electric Summer or with the Electric Summer Collection, one of my favorites. Um, I love the bright colors of that one. But this is a fun layout. I really like how the uh, decorative trimmer comes in right along the middle there, just gives a little bit of movement to the layout. Um, it uses the bold colors that were part of that Electric Summer Collection in there, but um, still gives a lot of area for where your photos can just pop off the page. So I will be using the Sweet on You Collection since it's Valentine's Day and I don't have photos. Um, I am going to try to take some photos throughout today though for uh, my husband and I together. He did get me some flowers and uh, maybe a quick selfie and something else. Uh, just three little photos on this page but you can certainly add more. So I'm going to go ahead jump over here to my overhead camera and we'll get started. All right, so here I've got some papers that I'm going to be using. There are four different well, there's more than four, but there's four um, tonal pieces in here. So I picked out four colors out of the Sweet on You collection. I've got the XOXO paper. The backside to that is the hearts. There is a diagonal um, tonal stripe brown. And the backside to that is the fun paper with all those um, icons on it. And then of course, I've got some stickers. There, the one thing that is part of this layout that is a little bit difficult to do, um, depending on your collection that you're working with or your supplies, is they use a mat in here. One of the mats, they use it out of the Electric Summer Collection. And I think that's actually a fun detail that they have in here. It's a four by six mat. You could peekaboo pocket it if you wanted to include a mat, but you still need room for more photos or maybe more journaling. But I didn't have any mats that went with the Sweet on You collection. But what I have are is the card kit that went, the card trio. So I went ahead and opened up a card trio and I found, um, I think I'm going to use um, we'll see. I have more of it up here if I need to play around with it, but just the little pieces that spell out love. I want this to have a Valentine's Day twist to it, but I don't want to maybe not blatantly Valentine's. I don't know. I was giving myself a little bit of flexibility in case I didn't quite get photos done today. And maybe I just want to, you know, have like a fun lovey dovey layout that kind of got a Valentine's Day theme without maybe specifically being Valentine's. So I am going to be where they show using a mat. I'm going to be using the card kit. So if you really liked this uh, Sweet on You collection, that card trio is a fun one to use as well. I will also be able to take a look and see whether or not the uh, Sweet on You layered frame might look fun on here as well. I would need to change things up just a little bit because it definitely wants to go a vertical presentation. So we'll play around with it. I'll see what it looks like, um, but we'll go ahead and proceed. Most Mostly how the layout is done here. They do use matte pieces. You can see they use some designer paper or it's actually matte. This is a matte that they cut. They cut um, one inch segments off of one of those mats and use those to kind of um, give a spot to anchor these photos here. And then a little bit of that same colorful band across the top. You can, if you have a mat, it's a great opportunity to use parts of those mats. They usually have some other patterns on the mats that might be fun. Again, no mats with this uh, Sweet on You collection, but I do have some stickers. If I wanted to come in with the donut stickers, I could punch a border and uh, create that one inch, uh, it could be a little bit bigger if you needed to um, across the top and the bottom here. They do also talk about using, they use a knockout style border to punch the flip flops. Remember a knockout style is one that does not alter the edges. It just punches out the design. I did not have a knockout style punch that I thought would work for this. So I will just be coming in. I will punch some heart to heart border and um, layer a little bit of that, some hearts across the top and across the bottom there. So that is going to be um, the, the approach for today. So let's get started. I've got, I told you about the four patterns I'm going with. Uh, just as a quick reminder, it's gonna be the red, the chocolate, 
the back side of those two pieces of paper are the icons and the pink with the hearts. So those are gonna be my four papers. I have a piece of white. Um, this is just a backing paper actually from the Sweet On You. Uh, it's the cover sheet. Not much of it shows through, so I will use that to mount those pieces too. And then the whole thing is gonna sit on a piece of brown shimmer. Um, I thought that would be kind of fun. We will go ahead and I think we're just going to follow this top to bottom. Like I said, I don't really anticipate uh, deviating much aside from a few different tools and um, little details in here. The overall base of the layout is going to be followed um, along with their steps. So they want us to go ahead and start with the base. Oh, I do have the pink, soft pink cardstock, and that is to punch those hearts, the heart to heart punch. I didn't have any scraps of it left, so I had to grab a whole sheet. So we're gonna start with our base paper, and that for me is gonna be the um, brown shimmer paper. If you guys have not tried this or gotten any of this brown shimmer, it is so pretty and sparkly, and I just love using it. Um, so here's my brown shimmer paper. We cover this up completely. There's not much that is showing on the outside edge. So I'm actually gonna go in here and cut out a 12, or excuse me, I'm going to cut a uh, one inch frame all the way around just to conserve some paper. You don't have to do this if you don't mind. Um, if you don't mind, you, you know, if you, if it's easier for you just to use a full sheet. So the one inch, I always turn my, uh, trimmer horizontal line up my paper at the one inch line that's just below my trim line. And then I start my, where the white line is here. I can line that up here with the, um, one inch, or I can just go ahead, especially if I'm doing a one inch frame, the very edge of my line, see how it lines up right there with the edge of my paper. That's where I'm gonna start my punch and I'm gonna bring it, or my cut, and I'm gonna bring it all the way over to where the cartridge lines up with the edge of the paper here. And that will give you a one inch frame. This works well, If this type of technique works really well if you wanna pull some of that paper out of the middle of your back paper to make mats. That's a lot of times that's what I do with it. I will have a 10 by 10 mat or 10 by 10. Yes, a 10 by 10 square when I'm done. And that will make some really nice mats. Okay, so here's my frame. Next, they want us to go ahead and cut that piece of white cardstock or white paper to 11 and 11. And then they want you to go ahead and attach it to your layout a little bit on the angle. You don't have to angle it if you don't want to. So here's my 11 and a half, or here's my white paper, and I will go ahead and cut this to 11 and a half inches square. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this at 11 and a half rather than just cutting off half an inch. And that's probably a good idea because I'm slightly over half an inch. So this backing sheet or this cover sheet is a, maybe a little bit wider than 11 and a half or 12, excuse me, cutting off, measuring this to 11 and a half. So there's 11 and a half. And per the directions, they have this angled. Just a little bit, I mean, you guys can hardly tell, but it is, they're straight, there's angled. So I will go ahead and run some adhesive around the outside edge. I have a lot of space because I've got a one inch. This is, this is gonna, over, this should overlap by like three quarters of an inch all the way around. And it's kind of nice when you angle things like this because then it doesn't have to be perfect. Like sometimes when we try really hard to center things, it can be a little, it can be a little nerve wracking trying to get it completely centered. And I'm just looking to see that my 
angles here where my paper is lining up are pretty even all the way around and they look pretty good. Go ahead and hear that in place. All right, so that is the background. Now it's time to add in those colorful bars. So the first thing we do, we're working on step three. We need to, well, we need to decide what order our papers are going to be in. So I am almost positive. I want my red and my brown because if we look at my four colors, here are my four colors, red, brown, it has a pattern to it, has those fun, all the colors in it. And then I've got these hearts. So one thing I want to think about here is I want to put, I think my lighter colors in the middle and my heavier colors. So the red and the brown, one will be at the top and one will be at the bottom, I think. But now that I'm, I can lay them in like this. Well, let me do this a little bit different here. I can't get them to show up in the order that I want. I was thinking that I wanted to have my um, red and brown, be it red at the top, brown at the bottom, pink and the um, designed paper in the middle, but then I'm a little concerned having my brown next to the brown um, paper at the top might look a little, I know this light, this piece needs to be in the middle. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do the white, or excuse me, the pink at the top, red. It'll go pink, brown, this red. I think that's the plan, okay. So pink is at the top. So pink, here's my pink paper, and I need to make sure when I cut it that my hearts are horizontal. Um, or they're, that's, they're not, they're going to actually be sideways because this is the top edge of my paper. So I need to rotate this and I need to cut it at two and three quarter inches, two and three quarters. And then I will rotate it and cut it to 11 and a quarter, 11 and a quarter inches. I messed up on that. Yep, I messed up. I cut, I think, to 10 and a quarter. So let's try that again. Two and three quarters. To 11 and one quarter. So 11 and a quarter. So I'm only cutting off three quarters of an inch. That's better. It's gonna sit a lot better on that sheet up there at the top. This is where if you have that knockout punch, you would go ahead and punch two times along the top edge here. I didn't have one that I liked how it was gonna look, so I will um, punch something. I originally was gonna punch it out of pink cardstock, but now I can probably punch things out of the chalk or the brown shimmer. Then they want us to go ahead and um, repeat the same process, but we're gonna use the whatever paper you're using along the bottom, which is the red. So it's my XO paper, and I'm gonna cut it to two and three quarters by 11 and one quarter. Measure this better this time. This is gonna sit at the bottom. I'm not going to adhere these into place yet, just in case I need to make any adjustments. Next up, we're gonna cut the other two patterns. So they're actually part of the same sheet and we're gonna use our decorative trimmer. So when I put this in, the, the back side with the, uh, um, the brown with the diagonal pattern doesn't really matter too much. This piece of paper here to me does have a little bit of a direction to it. Like 
I don't want my stuff to sit, you know, my, my suckers are going sideways here and my strawberries are going sideways. I want to make sure that when I cut it, that this is my top edge. You're going to feed in from one side and trim. And then we will flip the paper over, feed in from the other side and trim. That will give us the same, um, uh, so that they'll, they'll nestle in with each other uh, fine. Um, the other option for us is we could, uh, since I am using the same piece of paper, I could come in here, probably come in, give myself a generous cut. The key with this one is they want you to cut them as two separate pieces. You're not trying to cut a piece in half. The reason you don't want to do that is because we need to be able to measure from the peak of the swells with how deep we want each piece to be. And the decorative trimmer can be a little bit of a pain in the rear end to do that. So my recommendation is treat them as two separate uh, cuts rather than trying to cut down the middle and split it, split it in half, all right? That's my suggestion. So I'm gonna go ahead, I am going to feed this one in. Let's see, we're gonna come in. This is my top edge. I'm gonna come in from the left and I am just gonna go ahead and make that swell, cut the swell, establish it. Now here, I am uh, making sure to center my, well, we're gonna have to trim this short. It's gonna be trimmed once we do it and we trim it by three quarters of an inch, which is gonna be three. I'd have to trim off three eighths on each side to maintain my center. So I'm gonna do that. Gotta love the decorative trimmer. The other option is for me is to go ahead and like just cut a big chunk here and trim it down and then cut, but I'm just gonna do it this way. So sorry if this gets a little confusing. I've got it centered in here. I'm gonna establish my way, my swell. From the, I want to cut a piece that is going to be two and three quarter inches from the top of my swell. So I'm gonna come over here two and three quarters. My swell, the top of my swell is coming at that two and three quarters. And I'm gonna go ahead and, um, oh, this is trimmed. I need one to be three inches and one will be two and three quarter inches. Based on what I've cut, I'm just reading through the directions here. This piece here, which is the suckers, is the bottom one. I've cut it with the same side as my golden side. So I'm gonna cut this one to two and three quarters. My next piece, which will be the brown, I will cut to three. Okay, so this one I'm cutting to two and three quarters. I'm gonna go ahead, my brown piece, I'm gonna put inside from the other direction. And I will cut. This piece from the top of the swell, I want to cut to three inches. Three inches here. So one of them, Top of the swell, I cut to two and three quarters. That was my previous piece. This one I need to cut at three inches. Now, obviously when I go, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a dry fit here. I can see here that my pieces line up well. I have some nice separation between them. Now, the one thing that I've got going on is obviously these pieces are too, um, too big. So when I cut them though, I wanna make sure I either cut equal amounts off of both sides, or I need to make sure I'm cutting everything from one side or the other. So if I, I don't want, like I do not wanna cut off this side of this one and then this side of that one because they will not line up well. So what I'm gonna do is I will go ahead, I need to trim them down to that 11 and a quarter wide. So I'm gonna trim 
this edge, the right edge, I'm gonna go ahead and trim a quarter inch off, or excuse me, three quarters of an inch off rather than, I could do three eighths from either side. I'm gonna do three quarters from one side. This is the same side, that right edge, I'll cut three quarters of an inch off the right edge. My swell will be slightly off center, but I don't think it's gonna be overly noticeable and I've got a lot going on on this side anyway. So there's the pieces. I could, if I want, I could play around and mix if I wanna have the XOs on top, the pink on the bottom. I don't know, do we have any preference on that? As a note, and maybe I will adjust it because dry fitting everything together, I am gonna come at, at the top here. Well, they have it more straight. That might look better at the top with and have the pink at the bottom. Now my card that I have here, this card backing is four and a quarter inches. So it's a little bit bigger than my mat or my photo. I can come in and I can trim that down. I can trim the top and the bottom of my, that mat. I've got two photos that'll come in here like such. So one of the things I can do, I can come in with a little bit of this paper if I wanna bring it down here across the bottom at the top or if I wanna come in here. So Michelle's saying, Michelle, you like this orientation with the photos. I'm, I'm kind of leaning that direction just because I feel if I were to put this pink at the top, that it would, this is gonna blend in. You see how that white, that light backing blends in a little bit more. So if I keep the red at the top, I could flip around my chocolate, but then this is in the middle and that starts to take away from it. So I think I'm gonna go this route. Okay, bear with me. Let's look at this really quick. I can actually flip things around. I'm gonna flip the entire thing around. And what I'm going to do is we will just, because I don't know why I'm struggling with that brown and the red on top. I always like a little bit the darker colors being at the bottom. Um, my icon paper is, can go either direction and I could still, I could just move this to the bottom if I wanted to. Nope. That was easy for me to figure out that that was a nope. Okay, so let's go ahead. I am going to secure the papers into place. When worrying about spacing things that have, you know, you need to space between two, um, you know, a top and a bottom, I always do the top and the bottom pieces first, and then I can kind of center the two in the middle. Rather than spacing, you know, starting at the bottom and then working all your way to the top and you get to the top and you're like, wait a minute, um, it doesn't look quite right. So Kim was saying, what if I turn the other papers over? I could come in like such. I like that. The challenge I run into with that, just looking at this really quick, is then when I put this up here, it just kind of blends in across here. My option then is to come in and try to use one of my other backing pieces, or I could cut, I could cut a, um, Let's take a peek at this. It almost needs to be over on this side because of the way the paper is, is designed or it sits on here. Um, and why does this seem? 
for the seeds to come over. Um, I'm like, why does the spacing look weird? I could cut, um, let's see, this is four. Instead of using one of the backing pieces from the card collection, if I cut something to four, four by five and a quarter, how wide is this? Five and a half, four by five and a half. We'll start off with four by five and a half. We'll see. I'm going to play around. I, that's what I'm thinking. Michelle's, yeah, back it with the brown shimmer. That's what I'm thinking. Four. So I'm going to go four wide so that that width matches my photo. And then let's take a peek. So there we go. Four. And it looks like then if I have a fairly even surrounding all the way around it, that pink mat, that if I cut it to, it looks like it's about five and three eighths wide, not quite five and a half. Now, one of the things I have going on here, if I put it over on this side, you can see right here, I have a lot of upside down because of the way this paper goes, that there's some upside down elements and some right side up. That's how Creative Memories tries to help us out by giving it a little versatility. I'm gonna put it on this side. We'll just flip the orientation of things. I can come in with my, maybe it doesn't matter because I can go either direction with it. It's not gonna matter because I'll cover up some of it by the time I put my photos on. I sometimes forget about that, that I have photos I'm gonna put on too. It's not just the mats and the decorative elements. So there we go, lined up in the middle. All right, there we go. That worked out great. Thank you guys for all your input. Really separates those lighter colors and then um, the, the two darker, the slightly darker colors are separated. Oh, so Kim say their swells don't match. Yeah, this is this. I probably should have put the um, caveat in there that if you needed to, to practice on some spare paper to see to about trying to get your the swells because the decorative trimmer is a little bit of a, um, I don't know. It can be everything of your hopes and dreams and then just turn around later and like drag you down into misery. Um, I love it, but it definitely has a learning curve. And uh, even for me, sometimes I'm cut things wrong, lots of experience with it. And I still manage to get things wrong. I cut it and I'm like, oh, this is going to look great. And nope, I didn't do it right. All right. So there's my mat. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna go ahead and use just some repo adhesive on these. Um, I could have it say love, or I could have it say XOXO. Those are all part of the card kit. I could, you could of course make your own mat with there's lots of embellishments and stickers and things like that. You could do something there. Um, I was just going for easy. And I think, I think I needed these down just a little bit. I probably should have waited be, to put these on here until I had, because I wanted to add a few extra little details to this. I was thinking I would, could add in some more stickers or um, other title details.
Okay, so there, I mean, that's, I probably need to work a little bit on my letter spacing. I should have grabbed my T square or something, but we'll call that good for now. It looks not too bad. And then come in here across with, that's gonna sit just like that. Now here is where if I wanted to come in with some additional, something up here at the top, they actually bring this down quite a bit. We actually cover up quite a bit of that icon paper, which you know may or may not be what you want, depending on which paper you've used there. So I have some options. I can come in with the uh, stickers. I have some stickers that I could bring across the top here. They're donuts. Um, so I felt like if I use the donuts, then I need to come in with some element that says I could either, you know, come in with the I'm donuts for you, you know, as the, um, the part in there, which honestly, I love donuts. So that's really not too far. I love donuts. I love my husband, you know, they're like peas in a pod. And at the bottom here, I do need something to anchor these two down here. And so if I come in with the donuts, the donuts are super cute. I probably will go ahead and do the donuts. I am just looking to see. I'm gonna trim the donuts. Either way I get, I'm gonna to have to cut at the pink. Now the challenge I run into is that um, my donut, these aren't my actual photos. So, um, well, this could be a little interesting. Normally what I would do is I would use a little bit of like baking soda and just back my, um, piece here but you can kind of see like I don't want to really cover up those photos too much because I think I'll be okay well we'll see I'm just going to lay it on there I can still move it around so you guys can get the idea I've got some donuts down there the other thing too is I could come in and I could I could mount these on I have some of this red I think I'm going to do that. I think I will trim a bit of the red. How much do I need to trim? If I do my donuts on the red, that buys me a little bit of flexibility to be able to add my photos in later. I'll trim this out. I need to trim it grab my site guide here and come down the line. I'm going to trim it just shy of an inch. I think that should be some pretty tight. Probably needs to be a little bit narrower, um, but I would end up cutting off my donuts. I could have made my donuts a little bit sh shorter. Or I could just separate my photos a little bit more. I'm gonna have some hard time journaling over here, but if I need to, I can certainly just add a journaling mat or add my journal down here, maybe sneak in another photo. Um, the original layout, you know, they had a much lighter, they had that lighter yellow. Up here at the top, I probably will be able to come in just with, I won't necessarily, I don't think I'll worry about using that red. I'll just put the donuts across the top. So let me go ahead. I'm going to adhere this to my layout. I've got the placeholder for my photo. I'll, I'll tack those down with some repo adhesive that gives me the flexibility to come back and adjust it if I need to, or what I can pull them off, I guess is what I'm saying there. Just a little bit of repo adhesive there. I will share, show this layout at my retreat. But, you know, maybe I will manage to get some photos taken today. Donuts up here at the top. Let's see here. That works. There. 
I'm putting the adhesive mostly along the bottom edge of that red piece because that will let me tuck my photos in. You can see I can still tuck my photos in there. Nice little ledge to put them under. How many of you make layouts ahead of time that you know you're going to take photos for? Like you purposely say, well, like now I need a square selfie. I'm going to take a picture of my flowers and I need to come up, up with some other, you know, maybe I'll do a quick picture of my kids um, together or something like that. That would be a cute one to do, right? Just the picture of the kids. I could get them in here too. And then now I've got options to be able to come in. Um, well, the one thing I didn't do here is I didn't come in with the border up here at the top. They came in, you know, they, they punched the border. So I could let me, this small piece I have left after making this mat, I'm going to punch some with the heart, heart, heart to heart border and see whether or not I like it. I don't need much. I only need, I mean, they use about four inches, which is roughly what I have here. Maybe I have a little bit less, but I'm going to clean it up. I'll trim around that one and I'll come in here and trim around this one. So I can come here. I mean, this kind of fits in along the bottom edge. I just don't think I, I push this up. So I really don't have room up here to do it. I am not in love with that element right now. I don't know what you guys are thinking um, or what you guys think. I could, I think I can lift this up. Maybe, maybe I can't. I don't know what I'm gonna lift. Nope, I'm gonna start lifting the ink off of this one, off of the stickers here. We're gonna lift the ink off of my uh, red. So I really can't pull that up. And I'm honestly not in love with it on this particular layout. I think if I had been able to, like there's, in their original layout works really well because it's just the white flip-flops in there. It's very muted. And I am going in, especially wrong here at the bottom, I'm coming in with a very high contrast. So it draws your attention. In all honesty, I didn't even notice the flip-flops until I started really digging into this layout. And I was like, oh, how fun. They've got the flip-flops in there because it's so muted. But in my layout, because I've got, you know, the higher contrast, it starts to compete with this element here, I think. So I'm probably going to leave it out and I will just come in maybe with some additional, uh, stickers or embellishments. I've got some options with the, um, in my card kit, there are some things that are fun to work with. It depends on, you know, if I want to pull apart details of another uh, uh, card or if I you know, want to save that for next year, I can come in with, do I want to go the sweet route? You know, I could come in here up the top and it just says, you're so sweet. There is another, inside the bonus, there were other things instead of saying you're so sweet I can say you have my heart but the you're so sweet really plays into if I bring in you know if I want to come in with the cookie if I want to come in with things off of the stickers so there's lots of things in the stickers that I can come in so I think what I might do for this other one I'll do some flowers over here my husband and I together and I'll have my two kids that are at home right now Give each other a fun little hug. It'll probably be a ridiculous set of uh, faces on there, but that'll be really cute because then I can do like this little hugs and kisses sticker. So I do see somebody asking about, I could do, um, Emma's suggesting what about some pale pink hearts? And that would be a possibility over here. The challenge I've run into a little bit is that it pretty much blends in. I'm not a hundred percent sure. And I'm going to be really reluctant right now just to cut this. I have to see if I have another, maybe I do have, I used it last night, but I think I really used it all. I think I threw it away. So I think I've got looking just to see if there's any additional stuff I want to do. I could come in. They have some, 
So one of the things they have is they do have some hearts. I could come in over here on this side and put some of these like the, uh, the little smattering of hearts over here. If I wanted to, I could come in on this side and put some hearts. If I want a little bit more detail, if I feel I need something and then I'm not sure on this side, maybe it would depend on maybe it would depend on my placement of things. I can come in over here with some additional hearts. So I think for right now, because I still need to take some photos, I am going to call this is probably good to go. Um, I've got a big space over here that I can either come in with another um, couple of photos that I could do. Let me see if I wanted to do some quick selfies of myself with the kids. That's always kind of fun. I could do some little how to a couple of, well, I probably have to go down to almost, I'm coming in, I'm going to pretend it's, they're two and a half by two and a half, which is not exactly a fun size to try to print. You actually have to print like a three by four and chop it down. But I'm looking more for size. Like I could come in with a couple of I could come in with a couple of more, a couple more um, squares there. So this side here, or what I could do is I could have, oh, I need a little picture of the cat, right? Oh, she's going to love me trying to get a selfie with her today. Or maybe I'll have the kids try to hold her over here. I don't know. We will, um, I'll figure out something. I could always just do some little photo here and I could have journaling down here. I could, I could do journaling up here. I could do a little journal box, maybe a list of all the things we love. I could ask everybody, you know, what, what is, what do they love? I mean, that'll be really interesting to see what those comments come in as, um, the cat is going to say that she loves to, um, bite our ankles. So anyway, this is, I think the layout that what I'm going with, I really appreciate you guys and your feedback on it for some of those changes. I think it worked out really well. Um, I love the donuts in there. So cute. So, um, that I'll, I'll try to get some pictures taken today and see, um, how that all works. We also have my son, I should have my oldest send me a selfie. He'll love that. It's going to be a eye rolling selfie. And then I could include that as well. Um, since I don't get a CMT, I didn't even send him a care package. I'm not that great of a, I'm not that, uh, thinking forward of a parent to be able to do that. I could have bought him some chocolates and mailed it to him, but I'll send him some money and tell him to go buy his own chocolates. So, um, but that's today's scrapbook live. Thanks for joining me. I hope you all had, um, have a chance to create it, to put it together. If you do, and you want to share your version of it into the, uh, scrapbooking with Megan, you can use the hashtag that's at the bottom of the handout. Now, next week I am still on the fence of whether or not I'm going to have a scrapbook live. So you, um, I have my retreat this weekend and since it's a holiday weekend, we're going to go from Thursday all the way to Monday, which means I'm going to come home on Monday evening and probably sleep for 24 hours. Um, and so I may not necessarily have a scrapbook live next week. I need to look and see what project I can find and whether or not I think I can, um, get the stuff to be able to put it together um, get that all rounded up, um, with ease. So if I, you, I don't have one next week, I'll of course be, um, by the following week. And so we will finally get to have that last, uh, Wednesday of the month, which would be borders. We haven't done borders in a long time and there's a bunch of fun new border punches to play with. So I am looking forward. If we don't do something on the 21st, we will definitely do something on the 28th um, for all that. Now, um, other big things coming up, you know, we did have a Creative Memories had a launch this week of the new um, 
oh, the new uh, wedding collection called Something Blue. They also announced cool gray cardstock is available. There is a beautiful new border maker cartridge. Um, two weeks from now, Creative Memories has told us there is going to be a free shipping promotion that's going to start on February 26th um, when, at the regular launch time. So that's always 10 a.m. Pacific. And that was also when National Scrapbook Day supplies will be available to order from the website. Advisors have the opportunity to get those a little bit early, but uh, customers will be able to get them all starting on Monday the 26th. Tess and I have announced that we are going to do a free uh, workshop, project workshop to be able to put the project recipe together in addition and also put together the layouts from the project booklet. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And that is going to be on Thursday, March 21st. So we're giving you lots of time to get that ordered and get it in hand before we do that, um, that workshop. It will be a daytime workshop, but of course we always record things. If you can't watch it live with us, you'll be able to watch the recording. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. And then as for other um, things that are coming up, um, I mean, the biggest thing is going to be at yeah, the free shipping and the national scrapbook day items. And then there will be other new March products coming out on the 26th. I just don't know what they are. I do know there's going to be national scrapbook day, but there might be some additional stuff that pops up as well. So we will have all of those, all that detail for you will come on Friday. Um, let me pull my calendar back up the 23rd. Okay. So that's what I have for you guys today. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, if I do take a little bit longer to respond, you know, longer than normal, it, I am going to be doing my retreat this weekend. So that definitely keeps me um, busy, but I will be back and raring to go sometime next week. All right. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. Hopefully your weekend includes some scrappy fun. We'll see you soon.